Part three of the Hamilton Lottery Simulator. Here we go. So if you were kept in suspense in the previous video, I let it run and after 15,420 times of playing the Hamilton Lottery, we finally won our two tickets at $10 each. See you tonight I'm not, uh, at uh, the show. Okay, uh, uh, not really actually, but okay, but now, what do I want to do to this? I want to make this a bit more interesting. The goal here is to kind of make a little project that's about probability using JavaScript. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to change something about this. I want to make it so that this number here, for example, I could edit. So how many tickets are available or I could edit how many people are entering the lottery. Maybe let's change how many people are entering the lottery because we know um, I know based on the website that there actually are 10 pairs of tickets available. So that's sort of like a fixed number. Um, but I don't actually know how many people are entering. So I'll leave it up to the user to estimate that. So one thing that I want to do, I could make a text input field or I could add a slider here. There's lots of ways, but I'm going to do it kind of a strange way, which is I want to make this editable. And I want to show you, if you recall, this number is actually this, um, um, this element if I click inspect, you can see over here it's a span with an ID called total. That's what's in the HTML page. So if I want to have this number sort of exist as its own thing that I can manipulate and play with, I also want to make it a, uh, a span. How do I get back to the console? I also want to make it a span. So I'm going to go back to my HTML file and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say uh, span ID equals uh, I'm going to call this entrance, as in the total number of entrants. And you know, uh, later I'll maybe do something fancy to have like commas appear automatically or something like that. But right now I'm going to leave that at 50,000 with no comma. And I'm going to go back. And you can see that there it is, 50,000. One thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of styling. Uh, so the way. Right here, I'm in the style tag in the header. I could have put this in a separate CSS file. I'm referring to the ID by entrance. And I'm just going to do something like, say, background color, uh, make it like a light gray, just so we can see that that's a light gray. And then maybe I'll also add like a little padding around it. So you can just see that it looks like something different. Now, somebody is going to be a, somebody, when I, once I post this to GitHub, some nice designer will come along and redo my CSS and fix it up to make it nice. But the whole point is I want to be able to edit that. So to be able to edit that, it's not, this is actually not something I'm going to do in the CSS. DOM elements on a web page have things called attributes. Attributes are other are ways of modifying the behavior of a particular DOM element, not associated necessarily with just its sort of design, its style, its look. And one attribute is called content editable. So actually, if I just write content editable here in the span, as its own word, this is the equivalent of saying this, content editable equals true. But I can just put the word content editable in there, which means it now has an attribute content editable. Ugh. And now you can see here, this is actually editable. So I can just change this to any number I want. So I'm going to go back to 50,000. So the point of this is what I want to do is now, if the user comes here and changes that number, I want everything else to change to reflect it. I want to have this say, how many times do you have to play to have a 99% chance? I want this to say you have a one in what? So in other words, as soon as I change this to 40,000, this should say you have a one in 4,000 chance of winning. So now we need to look at what are the DOM elements that need to be updated. So this number 5,000 needs to change and that number 23,000 needs to change. So I need to make those also spans that I can access. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say span ID equals chance. And I'm going to uh, come down here and say span ID equals uh, 90, I'll call this one 99. Can I make an ID a number? I don't see why not. And let's call it 99%. <laughs> the 99% of us who aren't going to see Hamilton because the tickets are very expensive. I don't even know if you can get them. Um, okay, so, um, so now I have those elements as spans. Now, I have a question. How do I know 
when the user has changed the number 50,000. Now, one thing that I could do is draw is looping over and over again. So there's this draw loop looping over and over again. So I could always just say like, always, always, always check, check the DOM element, update the number, check the DOM element, update the number. But that's not very efficient. And in fact, I actually turned off the draw loop unless the lottery is running. So it isn't really looping all the time. What I want to do here is I want to say only when the user changes a value in that field do the do the other numbers update. So I need an event. Just like I have an event for when the user presses the button, I could now have an event for when the number in this content editable span changes. And let's look at how I could do that. So first thing is, uh, if I go back to the HTML file, I need to remember that this thing that's, that people are changing is called entrance. So let me go back to the sketch and I'm gonna say uh, entrance uh, equal uh, entrance and in setup I'm gonna say entrance equals select entrance okay and now I need to make an event entrance dot changed uh, update probability so just like look at these two areas here's the button when the button is pressed call the start lottery function when the entrance have changed call the update probability pra probability. <laughs> so this means I need to write a function called update, whoops, I want to, called update probability. And let's zoom back out and scroll down a little bit. So I need to write this function. So what do I need to do? The first thing I need to do is calculate what is the new probability. I have a 1 in 5,000 chance because I have 50,000 entrants divided by 10 pairs of tickets. So the new probability, one in 5,000 is 50,000 divided by entrance.html. So the HTML function in a DOM element allows you to set the contents of that DOM element, but it also allows you to retrieve it. Um, so, you know, uh, we can, uh, check this, right? This, if I type entrance here, we can see that's a P5 element. Can you see that? Let me give myself some more space here. If I say entrance.html, you can see it has the number 50,000 in it. If I change that to 40,000 and say that again, it has the number 40,000 in it. So what I want is I want to, when the probability is updated, change change that, that number, probability, 50,000 divided by entrance, and then I need to update, what do I need to update? I need to update this number, the chance. So here I wanna say uh, var chance equals select, actually I'm just gonna say select chance dot html prob. So let's look at this. Now I'm updating, I'm calculating that new probability and I'm updating that DOM element. So let me go back and change this. Ooh, what happened there? What did I miss? So I don't know what I missed. Let's, so I don't see it working, so I have to debug this somehow. So first let me just call that function. Okay, it worked. One in 1.25 chance. So something happened. So first of all, my event didn't work. Because <laughs> the, the, clearly that function does something, but my event didn't work. But also my, the math in that function is wrong. <laughs> so let me go back and try to fix that. Uh, 50,000, oh no, I'm being so silly. The entrance is the number for, well you guys probably figured this out like a while ago. Entrance is the new number that's replacing 50,000. And we know there are 10 pairs of tickets, so I want to divide that by 10. So let me save that. I'm going to refresh the page, change this to 40,000, and now update. So you can see that that works. The update probability is working, but for some reason that event isn't firing. Let's go back to uh, look at this. Select changed. So let me try a different event. I think, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm a little bit afraid I've come into a P5 uh, bug here. Oh no. Yay, this is working now. So I don't know why the change, so there are two, the, okay, so there are two different event functions associated with when a DOM element's content changes. There's the changed function and there's the input function. The changed function only changes when you've complete, triggers when you've completed your action. 
like you've pressed enter or tab to leave that DOM element, the input event fires continuously anytime you're changing your typing. So I don't know why the changed one didn't work, I'll look into that later, but I kind of wanted the input one anyway. <laughs> so what I now have is that uh, you can see that as I change this number, 1000, if I change this number to 1000, I have a 1 in 100 chance of winning. Now, how do I change this number though? I want to also change that number there. So remember, technical mishap weird edit, but what I, where I'm back <laughs> is looking at now applying this formula, which I covered in part one, of how to actually compute the, 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 pro, the number of times you need to play to have a 99% chance of winning the lottery at least once with log base 10 of 1% divided by log base 10 of the chance of not winning the lottery one single time. Okay, so if, you're, uh, if you want to remember that formula, go back to the first video. But for right now, I just need to find the place where to put that formula in to change that number 23,000 right there. So if I go back to the code, we can see here that this is, if you recall, I just did this a moment ago, this is where I'm changing the probability number. And the other number I want to now do is, first of all, so what's the chance I'm going to make a variable called not winning. What's the chance of me not winning the lottery just once, right? 4,999 4, divided by 5,000. Well, that number 5,000 is now something that's shifting. So what I want to say is probability minus 1 divided by probability. That's the chance of me not winning the lottery just once. So now the number of times is log of 0.01 divided by log of that not winning probability. And now, what, that's the number that I need to update right here. That's the number 23,000 that I want to change. So if I do that, all I need to do is select, and the ID for that span was 99%, dot HTML, num. And I think it's probably worth also using floor here because I'm going to get like a long decimal number. So I'm going to put floor here to take off that decimal. Uh, and maybe also what I'll do is I'm going to put that approximately. It's not really that approximate anymore, but I'll keep that in there so the span always keeps the approximate symbol. So if I do this, you can see now, 50,000 people are entering the lottery. I have a 1 in 5,000 chance of winning, and I must play 23,000 times to have a 99% chance of winning the lottery at least once. So let's change this to 20,000. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> well, that, the, the, the approximate was already in there. I don't know why I added that in, in the code. It was not part of the span in the first place. So let me do that again. I'm going to change this to 20,000. So you can see now I have a 1 in 2,000 chance of winning, and I have to play the lottery 9,208 times in order to have a 99% chance of winning at least once. So this is what I'm calling kind of a dynamic essay. I mean, there's no essay here, but as I change one value, other things update. I'm not going to go too much farther with this, but I am going to post this entire thing on GitHub, a link to it. I would love for people to add to this, send pull requests, add design elements. You know, it might be more interesting if you could hover over this and like slide your mouse back and forth to change the number, like almost as if it were a slider. Um, th this is not my original idea. There's lots of people creating work like this. You know, Brett Victor um, being one person to mention who's made a lot of these types of uh, you know, educational things online with lots of manipulable things. Um, so, but let's just make sure, one thing I want to look at is make sure the lottery is still working itself. The other thing I should mention is look at this. If I say zero, I get a one and zero chance of winning and then I get not a number. If I start putting some letters there, I get one and not a number. So there probably, it also would make sense to have some kind of error checking and also it'd be nice to format the numbers with commas. You guys submit pull requests to the GitHub repository that I'm going to post in a moment uh, and we'll see. Okay, so let's make the lottery now have uh, 200 people winning each time. So you have a 1 in 20 chance, and I don't need the console anymore, so give ourselves some more room. 200 people are entering the lottery each night. That means you have a 1 in 200 chance of winning, and you have to play about 89 times to have a 99% chance of winning at least once. We won after 61 times. We won after 49 times. We won after 35 times. So you can see this idea works. And now I could change this to 2,000, and we could run it again, and it should take us longer to win. Uh, you know, I would expect that by the time we get to 1,000, we're going to win 367 times. And now I'm going to say, 
let's just say 75,000 people are entering the Hamilton lottery to have a 99% chance of winning the lottery at least one time, we're gonna have to play about 34,000 times. So let's start winning and let's hope that we're lucky. I didn't get it on the first try, unfortunately, which means I don't think I'm going to see Hamilton this evening. I'm gonna let this run. I will leave you in suspense. Um, uh, ask in the, in, the in the description of the video, in the comments, I will let you know how long it took for me to actually win that lottery. And look in the description for this video to the link to the GitHub repository and the website where you can um, uh, add and contribute to this.